Hi guys. Today we're talking about the Pepsi challenge. Now, what is the Pepsi challenge? Um, the last time in my last video, we spoke about the Pepsi challenge and I kind of outlined it, what it might look like, but I never demonstrated it. So for this video, I'm gonna demonstrate the Pepsi challenge to you. No, it's not about how much Pepsi you can drink. Um, it's really about de-escalation. It is a de-escalation technique. And these techniques are used to help individuals, um, group members, students, family members, church members, youth group members, you, you know, all the persons we interact with to learn skills on how to manage their emotions and when they are getting angered and they are getting to a state you know of increasing tension how to identify those triggers arrest them de-escalate so that our situations don't you know explode get into crisis stage where we can't manage them okay so we're triggered from time to time all of us we have different triggers it's important for us to identify what those triggers are and nobody can tell you what your triggers are that has to do with your healthy self-management your self-reflection and you know processing things and finding out okay this is what had triggered me in this situation this is one of my triggers, it's my pet peeve. I don't like when people do that. I don't like when people say that this makes me so angry. This makes me so annoyed. This makes me so frustrated. And so you identify those triggers. And when they come on, then you, you know, utilize the skills, the coping skills that you have in order to de-escalate. All right, so let's get into it, the Pepsi challenge. So let's, um, okay, so for, the facilitator who would like to do this, what they can do in their group, their classes, families, you can um, have the participants sit around in a circle. Now there's a powerful dynamic to sitting in a circle and processing feelings. We face each other, we give eye contact, we're all attending, you know, it's not like, I'm on my phone or I'm looking sideways or whatever, but his attention is toward the circle. We um, share and we participate. And so it's recommended for, you know, effectiveness that a circular um, arrangement we use. All right. And so you get your Pepsi and let's start off with our Pepsi bottle and we're going to give the Pepsi bottle a name so let's call the pepsi bottle john and we're not picking on the males right so john started out in the morning um being shouted at woken up you know for school and he's shouted at to you know get his room tidy get his um chores done get his breakfast going attend to his younger siblings or whatever and this starts the anger John from in the morning. So he feels a bit ruffled even before he gets to school, wherever John is going. Now, let's say John misses the bus and he ends up having to take additional transportation, cut into his lunch money, and gets to school late. So now, He's feeling more and more triggered. Um, also, when he gets to the school gate, the security stops him, searches him, and there was this cute little key ring that he was given for a gift by a very special friend. And the security takes it away because he believes it's a key ring, it has a nail clip on it, nail file, etc. And the security guard believes that it can be a potential weapon, in which case he's right, but 
John never thought about that before. All he had was the sentimental attachment to the gift. No, it is a cost there. So this has triggered John so much. Now, John goes into class. Teacher is unaware of all of the, you know, the incidents that would have triggered John before. And now the teacher is addressing John. She's shouting at John, why are you late? Where's your homework? You know, the class rule says this and that. And look at you now. The time you're coming in here, go into the corner. You know, and this is in front of all of his peers. And he's feeling quite embarrassed and all of that. And triggered. So he's standing in the corner. He's not saying anything to anybody. He's just fuming. And now Michael comes over to John. Accidentally steps on John's toe. And John lets out, you know, some curse word or something that surprises everybody. John and everybody was like, that was not called for. Why did you do that? Um, get out of my class. The teacher, get out of my class. Go to the principal's office and all of that. And so all of these things you now triggered John. And now he gets to the principal's office. And let's say this is John. And we're going to open up now to de escalate him, let him talk about what are the different things that are bothering him. And so each person in the circle can take a turn, um, or the facilitator can keep the Pepsi bottle and ask each person to give an example of what could be said or done to help to de-escalate John. And as they give the examples, the facilitator would let a little of the carbon dioxide escape at a time. So let's say they say, okay, the principal would send him to the guidance counselor and the guidance counselor would let him talk about his feelings. All right, so a little of the gas escapes, and somebody else says, all right, when he shared that he has a shortage of lunch money and all of that, the guidance counselor gives him a note to go to the canteen to get some lunch. And so it would continue from person to person. Each person gives an example of what could be said or done to de-escalate. John and the facilitator would allow a little of the gas to escape at a time until the bottle is deflated. No longer safe, all right? So that's the, sample, the example of de-escalating an incident or someone um, who is triggered. And just to understand that each occurrence would have helped to, you know, build up that escalation. And similarly, each intervention would help to de-escalate it. So in order to process this now, um, the facilitator would ask each participant to explain positive words or actions that they could use to help others to de-escalate in different situations, and or even the same situation. And they could also share what are their personal de-escalation strategies, how do they on, um, recognize when they are being triggered, and what do they do in order to keep you know, a level equilibrium? How do they deal positively with anger? Because anger is uh, an emotion that all of us have to deal with. And from time to time, things are said or done that anger us. But how do we deal with it so that we are not causing harm to self or harm to others? Some people deal with anger by internalizing things. And that's passive aggressiveness. They are going through a lot. They are very angry. They want to crush things and crush people, but they're not willing to say it. So it keeps inside and it is actually um, 
psychologists will tell you and um, doctors will tell you that those um, incidences of suppressing um, negative emotions on your system will um, eventually lead to self-harm in terms of different um, sicknesses. Okay, um, I don't want to name anything, right? But you can do your own research on how negative emotion can lead eventually to physical illnesses, all right? Um, so the facilitator could also share new skills that have not yet been suggested by the group when they say, okay, I did this or I do this to de-escalate the facilitator will share some of what they do. And always remember that it is safe or share what is safe, share what you are comfortable sharing in that space, right? And encourage others to share what, only what they are comfortable sharing. And as we reflect on the practice, we look at, you know, how we can assist our peers, or we can assist our family members and all those who are around us in our circles to learn these techniques. Because we are all in some way triggered on a daily basis, but the trick is to understand what our triggers are, how to de-escalate them one at a time, before they get into crisis mode. Now, have you ever seen a Pepsi bottle that is violently shaken? You perhaps don't know that it is shaken, but you take it up to perhaps have a drink. But, you know, when you do, it spills over so much because it has not been deflated. We don't want to be at that receiving end of all of that negative energy, right? So as it relates to our relationships, we want to make sure that, first of all, we understand ourselves. Also, we understand that sometimes when persons behave in this way, we're not to take it personal. It has nothing to do with us. It perhaps has something to do with something you said or did, but it could be that there has been a built up of negative things occurring over time. And so this is just like, as we in Jamaica would say, the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? So this is my tips today on de-escalation techniques and how you could use them, you know, to process emotions, process different actions, and um, the needs of individuals or groups that you are a part of, but most importantly, your own needs and your own triggers so that you can remain healthy, de-escalated, and well. Have a great rest of your day. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you.